everyone. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on the skeletal system because I find that often students are not able to recognize bones and various foramina. Now what I'm going to use is the document that you are required to print out and I'm going to follow exactly as is given in the document. I'm going to begin with the skull and let's see what the skull consists of and if you look at your document you will see that the skull is made up of the cranium and the facial skeleton. Now when you look at the cranium you have this top portion which is the skull cap and then the bottom is known as the base of the skull and on the inside you notice three depressions we have the anterior the middle and then the posterior cranial fossa the anterior is separated from the middle by the lesser wing of the sphenoid and the middle is separated from the posterior by the petrous temporal bone. Now when we look at the facial skeleton it consists primarily of the maxilla and then we have the alveolar process. I would also like you to look at the zygomatic bones, these, and they form the prominence of your cheek. So this is where the zygomatic bones are, they form the prominence of your cheek. And you notice other bones like the nasal bones, you have these are the nasal bones and then the maxilla goes up to meet the nasal bones. So these are all of the other bones which form part of your facial skeleton. Now let's look at some of these bones in a little more detail. So we'll begin with the frontal bone. So this is the frontal bone and in the frontal bone what you need to know is the supra orbital notch. You want to, you get, it gets converted into a foramen by the presence of a ligament. Then we have two parietal bones on either side and posteriorly we have the occipital bone. So this here is the occipital bone and in this occipital bone what you should know are, so I'm going to remove the mandible so that you can see better. So if you look this is the occipital bone. In the occipital bone you can see this big, you can see this big foramen present here which is the foramen magnum through which pass the medulla oblongata where it becomes continuous with the spinal cord and then you also have vertebral arteries which go up into the cranial cavity. You have these two processes which are known as the occipital condyles and they articulate with the first cervical vertebra or atlas. Then if you uh, look here you can feel, you can see a process here which is known as the external occipital protuberance. This is the point that you feel at the back of your head. So if you take your hand down like this and before the portion where the head dips down to become the neck, right at the back, the little process you feel in the midline is this process which is the external occipital pr protuberance. The hypoglossal canal you see better inside. So if you look in, this is the hypoglossal canal. So up here, hypoglossal canal. It would be a good idea for you to get familiar with some of these names that I'm throwing at you. Hypoglossal canal means it obviously is there because there's another structure by that name which passes through that. Let's now look at the other bones. So we'll go on to the temporal bone. So this bone up here is the temporal bone. It, had, it has different parts and different processes. 
this is the styloid process. So, up here, the styloid process. This is the mandibular fossa, and this fossa is there so that the mandible can articulate with it. You open and close your mouth, and it's at this point where the temporomandibular joint is formed. You have a process here just behind this styloid process. This process here is known as the mastoid process. You can feel this mastoid process behind your ear. Behind the external ear, this little point that you feel, that's the mastoid process. And in front of this mastoid process, this little opening is known as the external auditory meatus or external acoustic meatus. It means the same thing. On the inside, in the cranial cavity, this here is the petrous temporal bone. And in this, you see this foramen, this is the internal acoustic foramen. So this is the internal acoustic foramen, through which pass the seventh and the eighth cranial nerves. Now when we go on to the sphenoid bone, it has two wings the lesser wing of the sphenoid. So this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid. The greater wing of the sphenoid. There are numerous foramina. This is the optic canal. The optic canal. And then separating the greater from the lesser wing is the superior orbital fissure. This is better seen from this side. So if you look here, this part here is the superior orbital fissure. Here, this is the superior orbital fissure. Separates the lesser from the greater wing. Behind the superior orbital fissure, you have the foramen rotundum. So here is the foramen rotundum. Foramen rotundum. Behind the foramen rotundum is an oval shaped foramen, foramen ovale. So from anterior to posterior, we have the optic canal, the superior orbital fissure here. So this is the superior orbital fissure foramen rotundum and foramen ovale. So, optic canal, superior orbital fissure, foramen rotundum, foramen ovale. So, I'm going to turn this bone back. And now, let's look at the central part of the bone. This central part of the bone is depressed. It looks like a Turkish saddle, and that's why it's known as the cella tersica. In the middle is the, called the cella, this is whole thing is called cella tersica. In the middle is the hypophysial or pituitary fossa. Then this is the ethmoid bone. You only see a small part in the cranial cavity. The rest is seen in relation to the medial part of the orbit, where it has air cells in it. Within the cranial cavity, in the center is a raised area, is the crista gali, this thing in the middle. And on either side is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid. So this is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid. The olfactory nerves pass through the nose and come out through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid. So that is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid. And uh, then we need to do the sutures.
of the skull. And we have three sutures that I would like you to concentrate on. So you have the coronal suture, the sagittal suture, and the lambdoid suture. This area is the lambda, and this area is the bregma. You have another suture here between the temporal bone and the parietal. This suture here is known as the squamosal suture. But I only want you to know the coronal, the sagittal, and the lambdoid. Now let's go to the facial bones. I already described part of the maxilla. So you can see that this is the maxilla. There are two of them, so they are known as maxillae. This is the alveolar margin. Since it bears the upper teeth, it's also called the superior alveolar margin. In the maxilla, you can see a, a little foramen present here, very prominent. Because it's below the orbit, it's known as the infraorbital foramen. So you can see one on either side, transmits a nerve and an artery of the same name. And present inside the maxilla, like the frontal bone, you have air sinuses, known as the maxillary air sinuses. These are important because they add resonance to, to your voice, they make the skull lighter, and they help to humidify the air. Then we have the mandible, and the mandible has a body. This central part is known as the body, this whole area up here, and then these on either side are known as the rami. And let me unhook the mandible. So here, this part here is the body, and these are the rami of the mandible. It also has a process here, which is known as the alveolar margin or alveolar process, and this is the inferior alveolar margin. Two processes present on the rami, the coronoid process, condylar process. It is this condyle which articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. So this is where it articulates with the temporal bone, forming the temporomandibular joint and allows you to open and close your mouth and also move it in a side-to-side -side fashion like that. This point here, where the body turns and becomes the ramus, this is known as the angle of the mandible. So you see the angle of the mandible up here, very prominent in males. There is, if you turn the mandible inside, this is the external aspect of the mandible, and this is the internal aspect of the mandible. If you turn the mandible inside, you will notice that there is a foramen present here on either side. This is known as the mandibular foramen. So here we have the foramen, the mandibular foramen. It transmits nerves and blood vessels which will travel all the way through bone to go and supply the teeth. The nerves and blood vessels which go to supply the teeth are the inferior alveolar nerve and inferior alveolar artery and vein. In fact, whenever you need to take or whenever you need to have you know, a tooth taken out or you need to have your, a cavity filled, this is the point that the dentist feels and they inject the local anesthetic at this point, at, near the region of the mandibular foramen. On the external surface, you see another little foramen which is known as the mental foramen. And what happens is that the Inferior alveolar nerves and vessels pass through the bone. They are branches of the fifth cranial nerve. They pass through the bone, they supply the teeth, and then they send a little branch out which comes out from here to supply the gums in this area. So this is the mental foramen. Again, in fetal life, like the frontal bone, the mandible really consisted of two parts. The two parts fuse with one another, and where they are joined, this portion up here, the bone is a little thick right in the middle, that is known as symphysis menti. 
Then the other bones that I would just like you to know the names of, these are the palatine bone. This little bone up here is the palatine bone, which forms part of your hard palate. The zygomatic, I already mentioned, which is this, forms the prominence of your cheek. Then we have the voma. You see a part of the vo voma up here forming the septum of your nose. So this is the little voma. Uh, nasal bones, I already told you. These were the two nasal bones. And then you have two very thin bones present here on the medial aspect of the orbit. These are known as the lacrimal bones. And they lie in relation to a part of your tear apparatus called the lacrimal apparatus. In the nose, you also have a little piece of bone, which is, act, which is a separate bone attached to the ethmoid. This bone is known as the inferior nasal concha. Now, the air sinuses, I already mentioned, you have an air sinus in the frontal bone. You have an air sinus in the maxilla. You have air sinuses present in this ethmoid bone, which forms the medial part of your orbit and you also saw a small portion of it in the skull, in, on the inside of the skull. So that those are ethmoidal air cells. And then the last sinus is a sinus present in your sphenoid bone. In fact, it's present right below the hypophyseal fossa, which is known as the sphenoidal air sinus. Now that finishes the skull and I hope you enjoy watching this video. I would suggest watch it more than once. Compare it to the image database or any other pictures or images that you're required to see and um, hopefully it'll be helpful to you.